Well, could solar power help reduce Australia's carbon footprint? In a sunburnt country, many might think we could make good use of what is, in theory at least, free energy from the skies. But Australia is yet to establish a solar power plant. In the second part of our climate critical series, PJ Madam explains that while solar panels are still a major source of clean energy for homes, there's also a push to exploit the sun on an industrial scale. Australia is the most exposed continent to the sun. Now we're trying to harness it more than ever. When people think of solar power, the panels on rooftops known as photovoltaics come to mind. But there is another type, solar thermals, and here, experts say, is where the future lies. Just how much sunshine we have landing on planet Earth uh, is absolutely enormous. So uh, in any scenario that world uh, studies have looked at, uh, the amount of solar energy is so big that that really is going to be uh, where we need to focus our effort. In Canberra, giant dishes covered in mirrors soak up the sun. They're the biggest in the world. One dish can power a hundred homes, so imagine what a whole field could do. The reflection makes it hot enough to cook, and on the dish itself it's 900 degrees. This kind of heat is the first step towards generating electricity. With that concentrated radiation we can do a lot of useful things such as making high temperature, high pressure steam for use in power stations in the same way that we currently burn coal to make that steam. In the Hunter Valley, the Liddell power station is using the good to offset the bad. In fact, it's the first time it's been done anywhere in the world where they've used solar thermal technology as a supplementary fuel in a coal-fired power station. Generating solar power means slightly less carbon is emitted, but going green is expensive, ten times more, in fact, than coal. It looks more space-aged in Newcastle. 170 mirrors and a power tower follow the sun. On a hot day, the heat inside this tower reaches a 1,000 degrees. There's no doubt that solar energy is good for the environment, but operating a field of mirrors like this is completely conditional on the environment itself. The amount of sunlight, cloud, wind and rain all determine whether or not a solar tower can actually operate. Now, on a good day, these mirrors can generate enough electricity to power up to 50 homes. But on a day like today, it's overcast and the system has been turned off. The other hurdle for solar energy is how to store it without losing its heat. The CSIRA is um, just starting up a program to look at storing those temperatures uh, much higher than that. Around the world, Australians have made their mark in this industry. This is the solar power plant in Spain, and in the US, the same design is used as in the Hunter Valley. Previously, local inventors were moving their technologies offshore. It was thought things here were moving too slowly. But some believe that's changing, particularly with costs. Once society has the will to switch from fossil fuels to renewable energy, uh, the technology can do it. The federal government is now investing, but the industry will face competition, not just from coal, but also from other cheaper renewable energies. Peter Jane Madam, World News Australia.